time folks I'm trying to get in the right place on my computer so I can read comments there we go I think I got it now Okay, we are all set. How is everybody today? Happy Monday um, here in the United States. It is President's Day uh, when we honor all um, past presidents, current presidents, um, and um, it was especially started because of President Washington and President Lincoln. But um, I've had some time to think about this. Um, Saturday, I was at my sister and brother-in-law's. We had pizza and watched a movie, had a nice evening in. And um, it was then that we learned that President Carter is on hospice. And I mentioned that I so admire him and his wife for the work they have done since leaving the presidency back, what was it, in the 70s, which I kind of kind of remember, um, but I was pretty young yet. Um, but, um, you know, the philanthropic work they do, um, all the years working for um, Habitat Humanity, they were saying um, that they were involved in helping build more than 4,000 homes um, they're extremely involved in their community, and um, I just thought, gosh, if we could all be just a little bit more like that, we could really see a positive change in our country. Um, so um, just some food for thought there, something that kind of jumped in my head um, over the last couple days, and today was celebrating President's Day. Um, Anyways, um, a couple of quick announcements. Celebration is still going on, but it's ending shortly. It ends on February 28th. So if there are still freebies you want to grab from either the brochure or the additional um, celebration supply list, um, please make sure you do that before February 28th. Um, I am going to caution people to not wait till the very last moment. It seems whenever a big promotion ends, the last few hours that evening can clog up the system, people get frustrated. So do yourself a favor and act sooner rather than later. Um, also to let you know the um, Dainty Flowers Designer Series paper is totally out and we will not be getting more. So expect that with, you know what, nine, 10 days left, uh, or nine days, eight, nine days of celebration left. Um, what is today? Today's the 20th. With eight days left of celebration, we may see some of the other celebration products um, sell out. All right. I do want to draw your attention to the very back of the celebration brochure. It is not too late to take advantage of this join offer and join my team, the Mary Stampers. Um, we welcome everybody. If you wanna build a business, I will be there to support you and help you. If you don't want to build a business, if you just wanna stay on and enjoy the discount, enjoy the friendships, um, enjoy the sharing on our private Facebook group. Um, I'm all about that too. But you cannot, I'm saying this with 100% honesty, you cannot beat the deal that's going on right now. Options one and two, you get either the white, and it's your choice, the white mini stamp and cut in emboss machine or this pretty boho blue one. That's a $63 value. You also get to choose $175 a product. And for all of that, the $175 plus the $63 value of the mini machine, you pay just $129 plus tax. It all ships free. The third option is $99. And that is the um, $175 of product that you choose, but you're opting not to take the 
um, mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. And then you pay just $99 plus tax. And again, it all ships free. You can't beat it. Do the math. You will be shocked at the savings. You will be shocked. It is nearly 50% savings on all that product. That doesn't want to go in there right now. Um, and my last announcement before we get started crafting is that the decorative borders class to go, my registration is open for that through Friday. Friday is the last day, Friday, February 24th, the last day to place your order and pay for the decorative borders class to go. And I'll just quickly show you the cards. You can get the decorative, whoops, where am I going? You can get the decorative borders stamp set as part of your class order with option one. And then I used the Something Fancy stamp set, which you can add on to your class to go order at catalog price without additional shipping charges. So um, that's sort of my extra little perk for you, providing you with add-ons at catalog price um, without extra shipping. Or if you already have that, great. You can use that stamp set you have. If you don't have that something fancy stamp set and you wanna use um, sentiments you have at home, by all means do that, okay? All right, let me flip my camera around now so we can get started on today's projects. I have two cards and two treats for you. Um, while I'm doing that, please share this live video and invite others, excuse me, invite others to join us for today's demonstration. Alrighty, let me just move this out of the way for a moment. What do you want to see first today? Cards or treats? Both of them are for celebrating St. Patrick's Day. But we're doing a twist on things. What's your thought? Cards or treats? I say let's do treats. Oh, Tony's, oh, I see Tony answered first. Cards. I think you got that in even before I said it. Tanya says cards. Okay, that's the way we're going to go. So we are working with some punches today, and I'm going to show you some unique ways to use the punches on these cards and on these treats because you know not only am I about quick and easy card making, stress-free crafting, right? But I also like to show you ways to um, get more versatility out of your products, get more bang for your buck by sh having more than one way or multiple ways that you can use your products. So for this card, I'm going to be using, we've got this heart bundle. And um, I'm going to be using the standard heart with the plain edges for this one. So I've got a strip of two inch paper. It happens to be two inch by 12 inch. I wasn't real concerned about the length, but I'm going to cut out four of these hearts. Now to maximize my paper, I'm going to be flipping my DSP around so that I can get in much closer to the previously punched, whoops, coming out, the previously punched heart. And by doing this, you can save on your DSP. Well, let's see if I can pull this out here carefully. And I want four of these. And 
before we go on to build our card, let me show you this. So I've got four hearts that I've punched. If I punch them <clears throat> all going the same direction, look what happens. I'm taking up more paper. So that might not seem like a big deal to you over time, but over time it does really add up. So just a little tip for maximizing any of your punches or even dies that are what I would say top heavy or bottom heavy. Um, top heavy meaning the top is bigger than the bottom or bottom heavy, let's see an example that, of that would be this evergreen tree punch is bottom heavy. This works to do the same thing. Flip that paper around so that you're punching from both directions to maximize your paper. All right, so I'm using a card base of basic white thick cardstock, measures five and a half by eight and a half inches, scored at four and a quarter in the middle. I have a four inch granny apple green square and then a basic white one that measures three by three and three quarters. Jen, I'm glad you found those tips helpful. You know, Jen, um, Jen Thwaites, I'm not sure if you saw a message from yesterday. I tagged you in one of the posts that you had won a card. And I can't remember if it's still sitting on my shelf here waiting for you for an address or if you've already sent me your address. But if you would send that address to me afterwards, that would be awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna make a four leaf clover with this. And I'm going to let the petals of my clover kind of lift off the page. And I don't wanna fold this. I don't wanna fold these hearts but I do want to just kind of curl them up a little bit. And I'm just doing that real quickly and easily with my fingers. Like I said, no reason to score. Doesn't have to be perfectly centered, but if you kind of position your fingers the way mine are and fold, kind of lift those tabs up, it'll work out just fine. And then on all of these, again, I don't want to glue them flat. So I'm just going to use some of my multi-purpose glue and go into that bottom corner of each heart. And the multi-purpose glue is nice because it will give me some time to um, move around those hearts and change the placement of them a little bit if I desire to. Yep, and it, it looks like I do want to move them just slightly. Whoops. That one's on the loose. Okay, that looks pretty good to me, so I'm just gonna press it down right in the center where I have my glue. But notice how my, um, the petals of my four leaf clover are kind of standing up. And yes, it'll get flattened in the mail, but it will still be nice um, for, it. and I think people will even notice when they open it, but it will be nice when they put this handmade card of yours on display. Now for the um, stem, I'm just going to cut, let me cut a little bit of this off. I'm just going to freehand a stem. I'm just gonna put a slight curve into it. Make it about this wide. Quick and simple. Okay, you don't need to measure anything like that. Keep it quick and simple. 
And then I'll put, whoops, I'll put some multi-purpose glue on the back. And I'm just going to tuck the end under a couple of the petals and position that stem just right there like that. Okay, now to finish this off, I'm going to stamp a sentiment. And this sentiment is from the Lucky Clover stamp set. I know many people are disappointed that they were not able to get the Lucky Clover punch. It's um, basically it's designed to punch out this clover. But please don't let that stamp stop you from purchasing the stamp set if you really want it. Because what I'm showing you today, we're going to use, and, and you can switch out the sentiments. You can add um, all of the shamrocks, clovers stamped to your envelopes, the inside of your cards and projects, make tags for the treats. So I understand the disappointment that many were not able to get the punch. And I empathize with you. That has happened to me in the past at times. But please, like I said, don't overlook this for that reason because there's so much value in the stamp set. Um, think back to the days when we didn't have all the punches and dies, and we were still stamping and crafting and making great things and enjoying it too. Really, the stamps or the uh, punches and the dies are really a convenience for us, right? Okay, so I added a good friend is like a four leaf clover, hard to find and lucky to have. All right, so there's card number one. Um, let's go ahead and stamp the flap of my envelope here. Let me just, I'm going to turn it this way. Now, let me show you my sample. Here's the envelope I stamped for my sample. I just um, put some scrap paper between the flap and the main part of the envelope, and then behind, and I just stamped randomly all over with the little shamrocks. This time, I'm going to do something just a little bit different. And I'm putting this here because I will go across the flap, but I don't want the um, clover and stuff to get on the main part of my envelope. Okay. Oh, Tanya, that pair of heart punches is awesome. I will probably keep mine forever and ever, even if they retire it because I use it that often. So I'm just going to think of this um, group of shamrocks on the stamp as a zigzag pattern, or like a rickrack if you're a sewer. And I'm just gonna go right across my flap with that. So it looks like I have a zigzag or a rickrack pattern of little shamrocks and clovers. Super simple, right? Just a little bit different way to dress up your envelope. So again, two different ways to use that stamp, um, to use that one stamp, right? All right, here's card number two. Now for card number two, and I previously punched, but for this card, I'm using both the plain heart and the one with the scallops. So they layer on top of each other. And like I said, I did go ahead and punch these previously just for the sake of time. So I can keep your attention while showing you some fun projects today. And again, I just want to point out to you the benefit of um, flipping your paper or your DSP, whatever you're punching, flipping it around when you're cutting something that's top heavy. 
okay? With this same piece of um, cardstock, I probably would have had a hard time getting all four of these in. But because I flipped that paper each time I punched, it gave me a little extra room, gave me that wiggle room that I needed. All right, so, and I don't need all of those. So for these, I went ahead and punched some um, DSP from the Dainty Delights collection. That's one of those mega packs of 12 by 12 DSP. You get 48 sheets and you can get this free during celebration with a $100 order. And let me tell you, it is worth it. I'll be showing some Easter spring cards soon that um, I use that. Okay, um, my card base is Granny Apple Green. Again, five and a half by eight and a half inches, and I scored it four and a quarter. And I've got two pieces of white cardstock that both measure five and a quarter by four inches. I'm putting one on the inside that'll be used to write a message. And on the outside one, I'm going to do some stamping and then I'm going to make a shamrock to put on here as well. So I'm going to stamp the Happy St. Patrick's Day message, which is also from the Lucky Clover stamp set. I'm going to stamp it right here at the bottom. You want to stamp before you adhere it to your um, card base. That way, if you make a mistake, if you roll it, um, or it's not straight across, you can always flip it over and try again. It's a very wonderful thing that every piece of cardstock has a backside, right? And the great thing about stamping up white cardstock, with this quality, you can flip it over and not see what was stamped on the other side. Now, that's different with alcohol markers like our stamping blends, but just regular standard stamping, you can flip it over. That previous stamping is not going to show through on the white cardstock. because we've all been there, right? We didn't stamp quite the way we wanted it and had to try again. Now, instead of doing a four leaf clover, I'm just doing a shamrock here. Anybody out there Irish? I'm not, but we I went to an elementary school on the west side of Cleveland called St. Brendan. And, um, the pastor and the priest we had there were Irish, so as a school, we all, re all celebrated, which is kind of fun. Fun for those of us that are not Irish. And then my girls get a little bit of Irish from their dad, so they're like a quarter Irish. Oops, which way am I going? I want to go this way, I think. Yeah. I guess it didn't really matter which way I was cutting, but. Okay, this is gonna be a little long, so I'm just gonna cut off some. Notice when I cut the stem, I'm, I'm not measuring. I'm not trying to, you know, do the math and figure out how long it has to be and how wide, I'm just doing it. Right, takes the stress out. The last thing any of us needs is to put more stress in our life. Crafting is fun. Should be stress-free. I just want to lift those edges just a wee bit to tuck, there we go, to tuck my stem under. How's that for quick and easy? Again, all done with the heart punches, right? Uh, Diane, the DSP is Dainted Delights. It is a celebration freebie with a $100 purchase. There's 48 sheets 
of 12 by 12 paper in that pack. I believe there's 12 different sheets. You get four of each. So super great value. All right. So there's our second card. And let's stamp just a little something on the envelope. I'm stamping this shamrock here. Anybody Irish? I didn't see anybody respond to that. Out of all of you watching, your cousin went to St. Brendan? Was it the same St. Brendan in uh, the Cleveland area? North Olmstead is the name of um, the community, the suburb where St. Brendan is. Okay, so there's the second card. So now let's move on to a couple of fun treats. Really, they're the same, just a little bit variation. And I'll show you another way of using, a way of using a different punch. Let me set that there, get these on my way so I don't make a mess. All right, so for the treats, I'm using the... What's it called? Cracker cracker and treat box dies. Okay. Cracker and treat. But, oh. Fran, I need to know your cousin's name if we went to the same elementary school. Gosh, that's exciting. Small world. But that makes me excited. I don't know why. I'm sure, you know how you remember your same school uniform and the taste of the chocolate milk that you got with your school lunch? Isn't that crazy? Anyways, so here is the main die for making the cracker boxes. And you are not going to believe how easily these come together. It's really something. Um, and then it also comes with all these labels and tags to go with any kind of um, small sentiment. Okay. And then um, some tiny little shapes as well. So you can add a lot of decor decoration um, to that. Joanne, you see it? Okay, you see. okay, that name does not sound familiar. She might be much younger than me though, I don't know. Okay, for this die, I'm using, again, this DSP comes from that um, Dandy Designs designer series paper pack that you get free with a $100 purchase during celebration. And I'm using um, pieces that have pieces of DSP that have been cut to five inches by six inches. Okay. Diane, if you've been trying to get the cracker box, they are back. I checked, literally checked um, about a half hour, well, maybe about an hour before I went live. And they are no longer on back order. So um, I would grab them while you can because they're so popular. Um, I've been kind of watching the inventory status report a little more than usual. And it's amazing that once we get inventory of something, sometimes um, the new inventory is also going very quickly. But yes, I did check just before, about an hour before I went live. I checked earlier today and then again today because I've been waiting um, to demonstrate these because they're just, they're so fun and they're super easy. In fact, do you remember the um, Valentine's Day treats I made with the Alphabest um, stamp set and the Hershey Nuggets. I was thinking Emily and I would make those for Andrea's baby shower as little favors to take home. But then I tried these, in fact, and we were going to put the word baby across. Um, so I had it all planned and my DSP picked out. And then I made a couple of these. And when I realized how incredibly easy these um, easily these come together, I thought, oh, maybe I want to make these instead. And then I thought, well, I really want to make both because the others are cute too. Maybe we'll send everybody home with two treats. I don't know. 
So there are score lines on each section. And as you can see, the, this cut perfectly and all those extra negative pieces punched out really nicely. And then the score lines were perfect. Now there are six sections, but in actuality, we're gonna cover, put one over the other. So it'll be like um, a hexagon going around, right? Hexa for five, five-sided. And I'm going to use multi-purpose glue for this. You can't lay this flat to get these to line up perfectly. You kind of have to do it with your fingers just like that. But I'm telling you, it cuts so well. It's super easy to line everything up. And then I just take my fingers and thumbs and kind of push those together. You can stick your fingers in each end for just a bit. That helps. And then notice also you can even just put your fingers in these diamond-shaped holes. And that helps everything line up just perfectly. Super easy. Pentagon. Pentagon. Thank you. As soon as I said it, I thought hexagon. No, that's six. <laughs> Pentagon. Ugh, I'm getting old. Getting old, Tony. Thanks for your help. And my daughter's a math teacher. What am I thinking? And math was always my great subject, but I guess I'm not using it like I used to. Okay, so now these ends will just close up like that. And when they close up, there will be a bit of a hole in the end, but that's intentional. It's A-okay, all right? So for... Um, I'm going to do this one first, and I'm going to use some white, whoops, some white baker's twine to tie a nice bow around each end. Here's a tip some of you may know, might be new to others, but um, a shot glass, and I don't take shots, but somebody gave me this cute Ohio State shot glass. She found in a, she said she found it in an antique store or something. Stella, where does Stella live? Northern California. She's another demonstrator, and she sent this to me many years ago because she knows I'm a big Ohio State fan. But um, it's a perfect thing to put your spools of baker's twine in or linen thread, whatever you have on a tiny spool, they, they just are so helpful with that. Okay, so I'm gonna fold these in half. Again, I didn't really measure. I'm guesstimating and that's okay. And then I'm just going to gently pull the ends and it just comes together really nicely. Now you want it to be kind of snug, but not so tight that it's ripping. And you'll be able to feel when um, you've tightened it enough. You'll be able to feel it. And then just tie off the bow. Trim my ends. And then I bought some, I went to the dollar store and found the Werther's, which I love. But at the dollar store, I can buy a small quantity. So I'm not eating so many because sweets are my, yeah, sweets are my weakness. I have a, I think I'm addicted to sugar at times. And I was, for St. Patrick's Day, I always feel like I should have something in, in gold wrappers. Like the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So I'm always looking for something gold. So now I'm ready to tie off the other end with a bow. 
So I put three of these in here. You can put all kinds of different treats. You choose. I'm going to push that wrapper down as much as I can. But you choose what works best for you. Oops, not tight enough. This guy keeps trying to escape there. Maybe I should just let him go because I can't keep him in there. And I'll trim off the ends again. Looks like one of these split a little bit right at the fold. Okay, and I'm going to use another punch to make a shamrock. Let me use this large one. This is the leaves or flowers and leaves punch. Flowers and leaves punch. Oh, yes. Tony, good idea. Single Twix and they do have gold wrappers. That would be awesome. Okay, I'm going to show you this little trick I have. Get out your stamp and pierce mat or something soft. And if you have a stylus, just use your stylus going in a circle. And that kind of puts the center in it, but it also kind of lifts up the leaves, the petals. Can you see that? And then I like to just put in some little strokes with my stylist. And that kind of gives the image of it being a um, clover lifted off. I'll do it this way, cover up that little slit. And I will put this on with, I think I'll put it on with a mini glue dot. Just one right in the center will do it. And then I need a little stem, right? And again, I'm just going to freehand it. Oops, that's not a nice curve. It's kind of jagged. Let me try again. And I'll decide where I want it, just like that. I think so. And the stem is probably longer than I want it. So I'll cut a little bit off. Jen, you're absolutely right. This um, cracker box treat can work for so many different occasions. Like I said, I'm thinking maybe Emily and I will be making these for the shower, the baby shower, at the end of April. I'm going to Emily's, uh, let's see, not this weekend, but in two weeks. No, not this weekend, but a week from this weekend. Uh, the first weekend in March, and we're going to be working on baby shower things and also um, planning our London trip. I'm taking Emily with me on the Stampin' Up! Norway cruise, the incentive trip I earned. And it starts in, or we fly into um, London Heathrow, so we are going three days early so we can do London. It's always been on my bucket list. I've never been there. Neither has she. So um, we're really looking forward to that. So there's the first treat box. Okay. Now let's finish off this other one. I'm going to tie off the ends with a bow. But look at this. This is that new, oh, what's it called? Parakeet Party one of the newest in colors and 
it's it's a it is brighter than the granny apple green but this ribbon goes perfectly with the granny apple green cardstock and any of the DSP that has the granny apple green so i use it with both the parakeet party color and the granny apple green color and i love that shine that shimmer in there let me show you so here's Granny Apple Green cardstock, and here is Parakeet Party. So you can see that Parakeet Par Party is almost, um, almost neon, I would say. Almost neon. Okay. But, but they are close, and they do complement each other. And but I just don't you love the shimmer and the shine in this? Can you can you tell on the video how sparkly it is? All right. This time I'll put in some of these caramel apple filled. I'm telling you, if you like caramels, any any of the Werthers are fabulous. One time, many years ago, our family went to um, Disney World. Kids were a little older that time we went. But I had um, some Werther's, a package of Werther's in my um, backpack. So every time we were in a long line, somebody would put their hand out and say, It's Werther's time. <laughs> I don't know if they remember that. I suppose they do. But just kind of a fun, silly memory. Okay, and again, tie off the uh, this end with a bow. I find that if I'm at home and working on my own projects, that I don't always cut off a piece of ribbon. I tend to leave it on the roll. I'm actually able to save some ribbon by doing it that way. And you know, if you cut your ribbon too short, that is stressful. So you either give yourself enough ribbon length to start with, or just use it from the bolt, the roll, or the spool, whatever you have. I'll turn this a little bit. So it lines up with the first bow. There we go. Okay, I'm going to finish this one off with a sentiment. And I will share with you another way to use these that I thought of when I added this sentiment. So I'm using the Happy St. Patrick's Day sentiment. Again, I've got a half inch strip of white and I'm just going to punch the ends with my Banners Pick-A-Punch. My favorite go-to Banner Punch. I love it. Okay, and I'm going to stamp Happy St. Patrick's Day, right in the center there. Very good. And I'm going to pop that up with some dimensionals. And somebody mentioned earlier that this is a treat favor that can be used for just about really any occasion. But think about this. If you Okay, can you picture this sitting on a dinner table on somebody's plate when they sit down to dinner for St. Patrick's Day? Awesome, right? Now Think of if you're having a dinner party or Thanksgiving dinner, Easter dinner, 
um, I don't know, what else would you have? An anniversary dinner? You could even write people's names on here. So it would work as um, a place favor on your dinner table. And I think that would be fun. Children's birthday parties. You could put happy birthday. You could do something with the theme. Or you could even write each child's name. And they have to find theirs. Okay. So here's all our projects for today. We made two cards. Remember this one in, is inside has the sentiment, sentiment about a good friend being like a four-leaf clover. And we decorated the envelope. And then here's another St. Patrick's Day card. And we used both of the heart punches together to make the shamrock. So we used our heart punch or heart punch bundle, the pair, to make four-leaf clovers and shamrocks. And then we also used our... Um, what do I want to say? Flowers and leaves um, punch to make a smaller clover. I punched these earlier with um, the DSP, and I thought even that would be a fun, especially if it were on a green background, even those would make cute clovers. And here's the other one I did, a smaller one. I forgot to show you this punch. I meant to pull that out too. For this one, I used the stem from my Cherry Builder punch. For the stem here, I just cut off the one end and made it blunt because I didn't want it around like that. And I tucked the larger end under the shamrock. Um, also, because I'm thinking of it, the boughs of holly. If you ever need a stem, you don't want to just freehand it. Punch one of these and then just cut off the leaves. Cut straight up and cut off the leaves. All right. So there's lots of great ways to um, make some stems for your clovers and your shamrocks. Any size flower. Blah, blah, blah. Right? <laughs> Okay, everybody, um, I'm not going to send the treats through the mail, but I will give away these two cards. And if you would like to have your name entered into the drawing to receive one of these two cards, please type in the comments now, Lucky Clover, Lucky Clover. Marcia, you like the treat boxes. Lori says, great cards and treat holders. Sue, you're welcome. You have a good evening as well. You could double up. Absolutely, you could double up and layer the small on top of the large clover. Definitely. Again, just another way of putting your own spin on things, making it more versatile. Um, I'm going to scan back here and see if I missed any other questions. Jen, um, our heart punches are sold as a pair, okay? You might have one of our old heart punches or maybe from another company, but if you want the two of these that where the hearts nest together, the plane inside the scallop, they are in our annual catalog and you purchase them as a pair. Fran, I'm glad you like the ideas. We did have a lemon lime color several years ago. I'm not exactly sure what it was. It called lemon lime twist or lime twist, something like that. Um, oh, Rolo candies would be fun for St. Patrick's Day. Yes, I have used those in the past. One year I did a jar with those and decorated with a label and gold and green. Okay, it would have been an old one, Jen. Okay, so yes, you can still get these, 
but you buy them as a pair. Hershey Kisses should fit in there just fine. Absolutely. Lemon Lime Twist. Oh, hey, Anne. I hope you had a good weekend. My friend Anne Granger is a uh, Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Canada. Um, so if you live there and need somebody to shop with, get in touch with Anne. But she hosted a very big fundraising event yesterday, and it is her sixth year of doing that. Um, and I just saw some quick pictures before I jumped on the live, and it looks like it was another very fun, very successful event for her and her family. All right, so that is it for today. Um, I will draw names for people to um, receive, for two people to receive one of each of the cards made today. Um, I am looking forward to being back with you this Wednesday evening, 8 p.m. Eastern time. And I should say, um, I'm not sure what you're doing tonight or if, if you've even seen the announcement. Let me move this so I can talk to you. Um, here we go. Um, so tonight I have a free online event. Um, it is called Craft and Chat. Previously, it was called Let's Kit Together, K-I-T, um, but I decided to change the name, so it's now um, Craft and Chat, and it will be happening by Zoom um, at 7 p.m. Eastern Time tonight until 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and it's a free event. It's really just a time to um, do a little crafting, set aside, whoops, set aside an hour for some crafting, um, meet up with other people who share your interest of stamping and paper crafting. You bring your own project to do. Um, I've got two kits. I haven't decided which I'm working on, or maybe I'll have time for both. I'm not sure. Um, so that's what I'm working on this evening. But we all introduce ourselves on Zoom um, and we just chat a little bit, say where we're from. Sometimes, you know, you have those small world moments like Fran and I did tonight that her cousin went to the same elementary school um, that I did. Um, and we just get to know each other a little bit. You can ask me any questions you like about Stampin' Up! Our products, um, joining, whatever. Um, some people knit, some people scrapbook, some people make cards, some people do kits. Um, Jen, I'm on Eastern time zone. So right now it is 4.53 my time, and this happens at 7 p.m. Um, I believe I did put the Zoom link here on Stampin' Peace with Mary Nave already. If you're on my newsletter list, it went out in an email this morning. Um, but I will post it right here again um, on Stampin' Peace with Mary Nay Facebook page uh, if you want to do that. But come join us. Sometimes it's a few people. Sometimes it's a dozen people. You never know. Um, but it's fun. And I call it the Crafting Power Hour. Bring your, bring your things and um, dedicate that time to um, just relaxing and having fun and chatting and doing some kind of craft for yourself. Um, Diane, this is not necessarily a webinar and it's not something you need to sign up for. You really just show up. You click on the Zoom link just a few minutes before it starts. I usually try to get on like at um, 6.45, 6.50. Okay, and I do this, I try to do this the third Monday of each month. And sometimes it varies um, based on my schedule and things like that. But lots of fun. I hope you'll consider joining me this evening. And uh, right now I'm going to do my exercise, then have dinner so I can be back on here on Zoom at, well, in two hours. All right, see you then. Thanks so much for joining me. It was fun.
and a share.